We're back with uh, Charles Bender. And uh, as I mentioned before, we gave him the vitamin K in order for us to have sufficient uh, electron donors circulating before we give the oxidative therapy. Uh, uh, and, and so in that way, we reduce any sort of side effect or negative impact uh, of the therapy. And, and now he's receiving the vitamin C. And uh, to a lot of people, it's a shock to hear that we're using vitamin C as an oxidant because um, most of the studies published on vitamin C are about its very incredible antioxidant uh, capability. But at the NIH, a number of researchers led by the head of research of the NIH, and his name is Mark Levin, he's published six or seven papers on the fact that we need to review the whole principle of vitamin C and how it works. Because he was able to determine that at very high dosages and provided in a very short time, that is when the drips, the drips actually go very, very fast. It has to go at one gram per minute. So in his case, we're giving him 30 grams and the 30 grams are gonna go, go in in 30 minutes. It's a very, very fast solution. That's why it's almost done uh, in, in, in this very short period of time. And when you give vitamin C in very high concentrations, it, in the presence of oxygen, it will produce peroxide. And peroxide is the actual killing agent for malignant cells. Now, if we have a lot of oxygen all over the body, why is it not damaging, damaging to, to the rest of the body? Is because we produce incredible amounts of, of enzymes uh, that neutralize peroxide. But the tumors don't have that capability. And so um, we, we have prepared him with the vitamin K and uh, 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 oxygen. Uh, when, when, when you see the other video from him, he had uh, oxygen. So that we know that we have all the oxygen available and the uh, electron donors uh, 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 from the vitamin K. And now we can do very high dosage vitamin C as chemotherapy. That's uh, the, the capacity of vitamin C in very high dosages to kill tumors is very similar to chemotherapy. And um, you, you can find all of those publications by Mark Levin and his group from the NIH. And uh, some of the reports also have been published from the NCI, the National Cancer Institute. So vitamin C, we've, we've used vitamin C for many, many years as, as an anti-tumor agent, but we thought, because we had, we, nobody had this information until very recently, from 2000, 2005, and 2005 were the publications, that we found the mode of action of, of vitamin C as an anti-tumor agent. We thought from uh, Linus Pauling to 2000 that it was the antioxidative capability. But no, it's exactly the opposite. Um, it's, it's because in very high dosages and given in a very short time, you will have an oxidative uh, process going on with vitamin C. And, and so that just proves the point uh, of what we learn in pharmacology. Pharmacology 101 teaches you, well, for, for those of you that are not in America, 101 means the, the most basic uh, uh, study of pharmacology. We are taught always that the difference between the venom and the cure is not the element, but the dose. In other words, water can be benign in certain amounts and be, can be deadly for you, the same water, in very high amounts. And the same happens with any element. Um, at certain dosages, it will work in one way, and at different dosages, it works in a different way. And so this is what happens with, with vitamin C. At very high dosages and provided in a very short time, it actually produces peroxide, and thus it is an oxidative agent. Also, we use vitamin, vitamin C um, in, in different dosages as a detoxifying agent after chemotherapy, for instance, or radiation therapy. Why? Because the way those elements work is through the production of free radicals especially radiation therapy. 
And uh, so we use then vitamin C as an antioxidant, as, as most of us know it. And um, the results have been very, very good. Right. What I can tell you, for instance, in, in a study that we did, a uh, five-year um, continuous study, we found, that, uh, we found that vitamin C in high dosages, uh, patients that receive vitamin C in high dosages, using it as chemotherapy, we have a 20-fold survival rate in comparison to conventional therapy. So, in cancer of the lung is where it's more, most effective. In cancer of the colon, it's only twofold. In cancer of the breast, it's about three to fourfold. Still, it's very impressive, but it doesn't work for all patients. So, w what does that mean? It means that with conventional therapy, um, usually less than 1% of the patients that were diagnosed with stage 4 cancer of the lung are alive after five years. With our therapy, about 20% of our patients are alive. And a lot of people say, well, two out of 10 is nothing to write home about. It is. <laughs> it is when, when the alternative is zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's you, it's locked yes. Yeah. So it, it is very significant. And as I tell you, with cancer of the breast, is, is about four times better than just conventional therapy. And we also have one where we use chemotherapy and vitamin C, and the results are a even, even better than that. Not significantly more, but, but still better. So there are some cases where we feel that chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. In some advanced cancers of the breast and some uh, advanced cancers of the ovary, we uh, still see better results with chemotherapy than with vitamin C. But in other tumors, prostate um, and, and lung, much better results with vitamin C than chemo. And obviously our aim and, and what we're trying always to do is to fine tune our least aggressive therapies to the point that they can compete with aggressive therapies. For two reasons. The main one is if you have something that works as well that is not going to be toxic, all the better. And the second one is that a lot of the patients that come here have received so much chemotherapy or radiation therapy that it's not an option anymore. And so we have to find something for them.